Hello, welcome to HQ Live. I'm Brenda Grells, VP of Marketing and Education at Handy Quilter, and you are not used to seeing me in this seat. And the reason I'm here is because your usual host is sitting right over here. She bumped me out. This is Vicki Hoff. She's our Education Coordinator, and today is our visit with Vicki. Vicki, you've been with Handy Quilter longer than I have. I've been here 13 years. How about you? I have worked for Handy Quilter for about 16 years and then with Laurel, the founder of Handy Quilter, in testing for about another three years and used her very first frame. Oh my goodness, that was the frame that you put together yourself and what kind of a machine did they have? On my Bernina. A Bernina on a, dom so on. a domestic machine was on a frame That's right. and then you could move it around and pretend to be a long arm quilter. <laughs> right, and you got about three or four inches of quilting space. And what did they call that frame? Vicky? The HQ2 frame. Okay, and we called it also the Handy Quilter and that was the name of our company. So That's right, that's how it all began. Started with Laurel Barris. And Laurel is still around in our friend and your friend. And Vicki's going to get to see more of her friend Laurel very That's soon. Right. Do you want to tell them why? Well, I've decided that it's time to do some other things in life. I still will always quilt, love quilting. So I still have my machine in my home. But I am going to retire from Handy Quilter. And I am going to quilt. And I'll quilt for myself and for others, for my grandkids and my kids. And I will do some other things like taking classes and just having fun. Not that I haven't had fun at Handy Quilter because it has been the dream job. Well, we've been really happy to have you here and Thank you've you. led us down a really rosy path here. And I want to point out a, a piece of fabric that's on this <laughs> table. Vicki, this is not a quilt. No. Nope. Would you tell us what it is? So this is the back, or the actually the inside of one of our trucks that we would take to our quilt shows. And inside of that is where all our machines would be, our frames and everything. So they decided to put us educators, and this is me, this is Cheryl, and a couple of more educators, and we stood there with a frame and it said, follow us to the next quilt show. So you were on the back of our trucks that carried our booth and to, I still am. to quilt shows. With new are. educators, so I've kind of worn out some educators yeah. and they've gone on their way of retirement. And so, so. it's a coverlet. It is, yeah. and you are the one that gave that to us for Christmas one year, and what a delight to have yeah. that. Yeah. What a fun memory. It's a great memory. Now, Vicki, you are not the only member of your family who quilts, but can you tell me about the first time you ever saw a quilt, or how did quilting enter your life anyway? Well, my grandmother had quilts all the time. She had, would have a quilt on the frame, on the big wooden frame where wow. you would do your hand quilting. Did it hang from the ceiling? No, she never did. It would, uh, usually it would get off before it ever had to go up to the ceiling, so it was okay. always in her living room. Mm -hmm. And so I saw that. I would, she would go in the bedroom and show me the closet full of quilt batting rolled up and quilt tops and finished quilts. Mm -hmm. And my mother was a quilter too. And she inspired me in my sewing, and so I took 4-H, and I took all those classes that I could do to wow. learn how to quilt, made my own clothes, made Barbie doll clothes for my younger sister. So I was always sewing, loved it. It's just in my veins, running through them. So you've mentioned three generations that I've counted already, your grandmother, your mother, and you all were quilting. Do you, you have children, right? I have, I have children and grandchildren. And so I've taught my daughters and daughter-in-laws. I have two daughters and three daughter-in-laws. And I have taught them, and let's just bring this okay. first thing that we, that I taught them, straight lines. So there's not really quilting on a frame, but this was just strips of fabric that I cut and they got to make this fun carrot for Easter, and all it was was straight lines that stitch and flip. So stitched and flipped, and was it on a batting background? It, there is a batting, so when they were finished, there are seams here that went through, so it was quilted. They quilted did and it. stitched all at the same time. Yes. I remember this pattern. It was in American Patchwork and Quilting was. Magazine, right? And I think you can still get it on their mm -hmm. website, allpeoplequilt.com. It's always been one of my favorite ones. 
But I think my favorite part about this is the story you told about teaching your daughters and your daughters-in-law how to make it. Um, did you have an event or did you have enough machines to do this? How in the world I, did you handle that? Well, I, I, over the years, as my daughter-in-laws and have come into the family, I've e given them each a machine. So oh. each one of them have their oh. own machine. Okay. So we set it up, and usually there's always these little children running around because <laughs> I have a lot of grandchildren. Uh -huh. And so I set, we set up our machines, and then I taught them just that. I mean, this is so simple because it's straight line. I even bound it for them so they didn't have to worry about that oh. part. Yeah, just because so they sometimes got that, that can very, be a little frustrating, right? That's right. So, so what was the purpose of helping them out that way? Why did you do that? To get them, get that in their blood uh -huh. so that I had somebody <laughs> to quilt with me. And so with me. Oh, so you had a reason. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, and, I wanted and them And has to it know. worked? It has because we moved on. And I think this is another quilt from American Patchwork and Quilting too. Okay. So another quilt of straight lines. And so straight lines are just so easy for sure. the, you know, my little granddaughters are now are wanting to do this too. And they have done some. And so these straight lines of just a log cabin block pieced them together, and then I quilted them for them. So they did the piecing of the log cabin blocks mm -hmm. themselves, and you taught them they how? They even did the applique of the stars. Did they cut the strips too? No, I had all the strips cut. I have to to teach them in, in baby steps, and that's what we do at Handy Quilter. We start in baby steps. So I'm really interested in this, Vicki, because I think this is something all all quilters who have family members who have expressed an interest might find useful the way you do this. I just think it's pretty cool. So how, how many days do you spend together doing this? It was one full day and one that was it. Day. So if they're not finished then they finally take their strips and go home and then they can finish that. But normally usually we always got finished with a carrot. Uh -huh. Always was done with the carrot and then uh, this one may have taken a little longer, but they had that technique so they could just... And had you cut the strips before they got there too? I did. I cut the strips every time okay. on this. So you did all kinds of steps to help them get started, and then when they left, they felt confident they could do this at mm -hmm. home, right? Yeah. I gave them what I call, what I feel is so important, I gave them inspiration. Ah. And you can see that back here. I have that hanging in my house as I walk into my quilting room that inspire because I feel it's so important. Once you inspire them and they catch it, mm -hmm. they just take off running. That's exciting, Vicki. What else have you got here? Well, for going along with that inspire, uh, when we came out with the Pro Stitcher, which I was just like, it was it was just running up my veins, like, yes, I gotta have this. Pro, I, Pro Stitcher, by the way, is Pro our Stitcher robotic system. is our system. robotic system. Mm -hmm. And so I had a quilt top at home that just had all these blocks. And at that time, they said, Vicki, you run with that Pro Stitcher, you learn how to use that. And so I put this quilt on at work and I worked on that every day. And this took a lot longer than it would today mm -hmm. because I was just learning the program. But so, this is my first Inspire. So what kinds of things did you have to learn how to do in order to quilt this using a Pro Stitcher? I, I needed to learn how to do uh, build a, an area and put a design in a block. Okay. I needed to learn how to repeat. Now this right here is a repeated design and this, the border is a repeated design. Well, now you'd need to tell me about that. I can see in this border that there's a there's a motif of a Mitten, uh, mittens. a mitten, and how many mittens were in one? There were two mittens, so of course we have two Left mittens, and, right. and then you would repeat those I see. across down the border, or the border of your quilt. You had to learn how to repeat them and, and how to hook them together. Right, but I also had to learn how to resize because the same mittens are right here in a miniature form. Oh my goodness, so I'm going to hold my hands top and bottom of the mitten and you do the same. So that's the very same design mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of a Pro Stitcher, right? That you can use one design in lots of ways. That's right, resize it, stretch it, okay. crop it out a little bit. So that was my Inspire on a robotic system that mm -hmm. I just loved. That's awesome. Now I know, Vicki, that um, you, you like to talk about how 
In the old days here at Handy Quilter, we used to have a little bit of downtime, and oh. we, we had a month, in fact, the month of January, often there wasn't a lot going on. And how did you fill your time during the month of January? Well, you know, everyone feels like January and February are like duh months, dark and gray. Up here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're Right, kind of and there's gray. nothing to do. Christmas is over. What yeah. do we do? That's when I had, I felt like, wow, that's the time that I start taking classes. You take classes. I take classes. I would take, I would take classes in computers, in you know Microsoft. I would take sewing classes. I would take painting classes. Anything uh -huh. that I could find, because uh -huh. usually that's when they started classes again. Sure. Is in January for the next season, and so I would just sign up for classes because that's what I just want that learning part. But Handy Quilter has got. I've been really busy, busy in the last, yeah. so yeah. I haven't been able to do that. So that is one of the things I'm really looking forward to doing. Oh, in retirement, you plan to mm -hmm. keep taking classes. Keep, mm -hmm. Yeah, I and think learn. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, I kind of recognize this, and I remember a story about it being something that you learned how to do in a class with, with the great Karen McTavish. Karen McTavish. Right? So she came. Uh, we decided, and Laurel kind of got this going. Uh, she decided she wanted to learn Karen's technique on shadow turpunto. So wow. shadow means that it's shadowing through this yellow. This is a really hot, bright yellow behind here. It doesn't look bright yellow. Right, but mm -hmm. because of that white Batiste fabric, and then this is batting here. So Karen came with her big suitcase full of stencils. Oh my. And she taught us how to mark our fabric in quadrants, and then she opened that big bag of stent or suitcase of stencils on the floor and we're down there crawling around seeing what type of a design we want to put on our quilt. Wow. Feathers because they were all stencils and, and then we would draw them on here and then we learned her process and she has a book that teaches this but it was it was it took me about 60 hours to do this. Wow. And With, this is all free motion. We were just talking about pro stitch here, but this is not pro stitch. This is right? all free motion, and that's where I started, free motion. As a matter of fact, when I started with that HQ2 frame on a table, like a banquet table, mm -hmm. I had that frame on there, and I put on muslin. Ah. And then I would put on a light-colored thread, and I would say, I'm going to learn how to do just loops and get them nice. So and I would stitch rows and rows and that rows. That sounds a lot like practicing to me. And that's what we teach here is <laughs> practice, practice, practice. <laughs> and that's what I did. And yeah. then I would put another piece of fabric over the top of that rather than reloading. Oh, that seems really smart. And then smart. I would stitch more and stitch more. And so I spent a lot of time practicing mm -hmm. before I ever put on a real life quilt. Well, I think those are probably uh, wise words, good advice. That's right, right? for sure. So, so I've taught my girls and my, grand, or my daughters and my daughter-in-laws to quilt. And so uh, my, my husband, he, he got a little sick, well, a let's, lot sick. Well, let's talk about him before we even okay. talk about that. Because Steve Hoff was your husband and there too. Um, we lost Steve a few years ago about six years but he was here at Handy Quilter uh, did he come in before or after you he came in about three weeks after I came in oh so about the same time yeah he was our first salesman our first national salesman right and right. he he worked the entire country all by himself. He did. He was a remarkable man, and we all miss him very much. Yes. And I know your family does, too. So this quilt has something to do with Steve, doesn't it? Yes. This started when he got sick. This started because he was freezing all the time. So my daughter said, we need to put our hands on Dad and give him warmth. Oh. And so oh. all of the grandkids and all of the, my sons, the son-in-laws, they all made a block. And, they, and then my daughter put it all together. And then I quilted it. Would you read this one for us? It says, love you, Dad. Thanks for all your help with H&R, which he worked for H&R Block, to make my life so much easier. So he and my son, Scott, did work together with H&R Block. And I see some really tiny hands. And who did they belong to? This one is Abby. Now, Abby is 9 or 10 now, so those hands are really small. But this it one... It says she was 10 months old. Oh, yes! 10 months old. So this yeah. one is from Sha or Trevor. This is another one of my sons. It says, love you, Dad. Thanks for being such an incredible father. And he was. He was. We talk about him often about the patience he had. He's the patience of Job. He was an amazing man. 
He was quite a salesperson, too, and we often took him to shows. Handy Quilter goes to the big quilt shows in the country, and, the and I can still remember him up to the very last minute that the show closed. He was there all excited to share his love of quilting with whoever passed, his, passed by. That's right, and he'd yeah. be up there teaching, and, and the women would just keep coming, and he'd have this great big group of women yeah. all the time. Because he was really enthusiastic about it. He was. Vicki, how long did it take you to make that quilt? And I'm sorry for asking that question. I know that's every quilter's most hated question. How long did it take you to make that? But I'm guessing this was a quick turnaround. This was a quick turnaround. Um, and I can't even remember if it was for his birthday or something, but they, the, he just was freezing all the time. And so we took some nice fleece and put on the back. So, oh, that's that really You know, soft this was fabric. just a fun activity that all my kids did. And then my other daughter took them all and just pieced them together because ah. I taught my daughters how to sew. So. Well, see, that came in handy, didn't it? And then you quilted it? I quilted and it you and bound, bound it. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's a wonderful memory piece. So it's a good, nice, warm quilt. You know, we always, uh, around here, we talk about quilts having stories and meaning, and this is certainly a good example of it that. It does. And so the same daughter that pieced this and put it together, you know, I think the same daughter. I do have two daughters that would they have both, done this. They so both I'm pieced. not sure which one pieced we this. We won't tell who did okay. it. They'll tell me. But you're going to tell this. me another daughter pieced this one, or one of the girls. I think the one it? that pieced this did these. So she has two. She has three daughters, and she wanted to put two of them in the same room. And she had chosen her fabric. She had chosen her colors, and she needed a help with a design. And so we created these two. So and we've got two quilts two. here. They're not exactly the same. Well, before you go into that, I want to just show everybody though. The difference in the quilting here because both of these were quilted by you right. right and there's a very obvious difference in the density of the quilting so yes. talk about that a little bit and and why you would have chosen one over the other and good question yeah, just speak because I could have actually taken this quilt and I could have custom quilted it. Sure. So I could have quilted quilted in the sashing. Because I and see the you went right over the hand. I did. And right over, right over everything. It. And it doesn't distract from it at all. No, I agree. It looks so, really nice. So this is a design you would call an edge to edge mm -hmm. design. Mm -hmm. Edge to edge, and I just chose a design, and we just went right and across. And this was it. probably a pro stitcher then. It was a pro stitcher. Okay. Yes. So you're able to just set it up, and and quilt it pretty quickly. Right? Very quickly, okay. within an hour or two. So then this. Okay, so the, these two that go in the same bedroom on twin beds. Oh gosh, how wonderful. Okay, so these are still custom quilted. Well, mm -hmm. I think I did do a pro stitcher in here. This is a pro stitcher design sure. here. Fair but enough. all of this, all of this is um, pretty much free motion rulers. Uh-huh. Okay? Except we have this awesome feature in the Pro Stitcher that is, it's called Mark. Okay. And so I set this up on the frame because I have a large frame at Fusion at that time. And I would mark, rather than have to take a ruler and just draw that with a ruler or quilt it with a ruler, mm -hmm. I would say, all right, uh, half an inch in or an inch in, I would mark it here. I would move my machine up, I would mark it here, move it here and mark it. And I did that all the way across. And then oh. I said, run. And it did all my straight lines perfect. It seems to me that like that simple feature might be one of my most favorite things Love about pro stitcher. <laughs> because we always tell our students that the hardest thing to do free motion is a straight line. That's what the robot is really good at, the computer is good at. Well, if someone struggles using a ruler, and that's quite mm -hmm. a big th space there, but if you struggle using a ruler, then you can just mark that and that, and it's gonna put a straight line there and you don't have to worry because of your arthritis or because you're just not comfortable with rulers. I see a little trick in this quilt too, in the quilting that I've often seen you employ, and that is double lines going along uh, a piecing line. So Creating negative space. I'm assuming you did a stitch in the ditch here to start. I did. Because uh, we often do recommend that, right? Mm -hmm. But then you've got two two lines Channels. here so so what's going on there and why is that so darn effective that negative space because it's letting it's of course of 
first of all, the stitch in the ditch is going to lay that down so uh -huh. that whatever you put on either side of it can pop. Did you stitch in the ditch around the I, knees? I did. I, yeah. I'm, okay, I stitched got in the it. Ditch. And so then by giving this that negative space each time t and the double negatives. Now you can do a quarter inch, but look what a half an inch does. It really, I get tired of hearing this, it makes it pop. It does. It does make it pop. But it's then when so you look good. at the bubbles, or the circles here, they in themselves are a negative space. Yeah. And by adding the straight line there, you've got that pop again. So Vicki, I notice in this, in both quilt tops, you have a lot of white space. Yes. And uh, one of my favorite uh, terms that I hear the studio educators use is a word that describes all that space. And what do you guys call it? Give it a quilting property? Well, that's one of them. And the other one, I, I remember you saying a lot. Real is estate. Real estate. <laughs> real yeah. estate. And, and you would look, I would hear quilters here look at a quilt top and say, look at all that real estate. Uh, they just couldn't wait to quilt it. And, and I can see that in your face. That's yeah. the way you are too, right? Yeah, I love because the white pops. This, if I'd have done the very same thing here, in here, you wouldn't have seen that impact. You wouldn't have had that impact that you have with the white, with the light colors. That's really remarkable. Vicki, I can see that we're going to move into another season here, and I'm going to just ask us to take a little break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to HQ Live, a visit with Vicki. This is Vicki Hoth, who's the Education Coordinator for Handy Quilter, and I'm Brenda Grells. Vicki, we promised um, a, a change of seasons here, and it's beginning to look a little bit like Christmas. Christmas. Yes. So this is a quilt that I recognize because um, Handy Quilter does a gift for their retailers each year at Christmas, and it's a box of chocolate and we like to put a quilt on that chocolate box. And one year, this was the quilt we featured, right? It was perfect because if it was kind of like this, it looked like the box was wrapped with some black ribbon. That's right, that's what we did. Now there's a beautiful design here and it's very fine stitching. First of all, oh my goodness, it's bling. It is bling. <laughs> <laughs> so we do like our shine and our bling, don't we, Vicki? Yes. And tell me how you got that. What kind of thread is that? Well, that's a, it's a, like a metallic, yeah. and, and is this our favorite one from Superior? It's from Superior, absolutely, and it's a metallic thread, and so it's a metallic thread twisted on a, like a polycore, so it makes it stronger. Oh, because, you know, in my old sewing days, I was always afraid of metallic thread because they broke. This one, you don't have that problem? Look. Look, I did this whole quilt. No, I didn't. Oh my goodness. And the thing that I wanted is I wanted, I had this outside design here and I liked uh, the little circles that it gave me mm -hmm. and so I filled those circles in free motion. But here I wanted to combine it all together and so I created this in a designer program. Oh my goodness. So that it stitches out continuous. So in, it would in stitch. In software, you use software uh -huh. to create this? Mm -hmm. So it would stitch the circle, we'll start here, it would stitch the circle and it would come around and it needed to create another circle, it had to go back there. So the way it got back there was it zigzagged its way across. Oh, that's stitched so clever. Stitched a circle, zigzag across. Oh, that's beautiful. Sorry. We've got a program that you could have done this in called Pro Stitcher Designer, right? Absolutely. So that's yes. one one good use of that kind oh, of software. A, yeah, it was it was easy, easy to make. This is a crazy quilt, and usually we don't quilt crazy quilts on long arms, but is there a long arm component to these blocks? There, yes, it's all free motion in there. So, so those this crazy part, stitches you did with a no, long arm? No, I those? did all of those blocks on my domestic machine okay. with metallic thread, yeah. and then I came back and with the metallic thread again, stitch all different types of designs. <laughs> and it's so busy that, well, I don't even know if you can see, but you might be able to see on the back here, each block had a different look to it, uh -huh. and it was just great. Lots of fun. So Christmas, of course, is a time of year that lots of quilters make quilts for. I see you've got another one here, and even though sheep don't necessarily say qu uh, Christmas to me, these colors certainly do. So That's right. What? But the thing about these 
uh, I filled all of these sheep in with my free motion quilting, okay? okay? This is all free motion quilting and making these sheep look really fun, okay? But on the outside, I used the Pro Stitcher. So I took, which wait, is our wait computerized. A you did both free motion quilting and Pro Stitcher in the same quilt. Right, all, and, all the time. So all the time, okay, all the time. So what's the advantage of that? Well, because I didn't want to have to use a ruler like this quilt here has all these circles. Uh -huh. There's a design, and the same thing here. There's this a design. This is a little tiny clamshell. Right, and the pro stitcher did it, and I just cropped away the sheep and let it stitch. Okay, its designs. So I think I see uh, an opportunity for a tip here. There are button eyes here. Now you didn't happen to quilt in that sheep's face, so. The buttons could have gone on before. It could have, but I but never. Did you? I never put buttons or any type of embellishing on a quilt until after it's quilted. And why would that be? Because I want If I wanted to stitch in that face, I those buttons might hinder me. Okay. You know, if I wanted to put, some, but I kind of wanted those little faces to pop. So. Tell Negative the audience, choice. give them a tip. If you work with a long armor who quilts for you and you've got a quilt that's going to have a lot of embellishments, what's your advice for that, that well, piece, Well, that's interesting because I just, I quilt for others a little bit and I had a friend just bring a quilt in and as I looked at the quilt, I thought, well, if I were finishing this quilt, I would put a button there and there and you know in different spots uh -huh. but she hadn't which was great yeah. but I didn't know that and so not knowing that I thought well if, she, if she's not gonna put a button there I should quilt something there I see yeah okay but so when she took the quilt back she says oh yeah I'm gonna put a button here and here and I'm uh, thought, right had where I you thought. known that but I it, it was okay it actually worked out okay sure but the point is to talk to your long armor right about your plans yeah Mm -hmm. So that you're working together in concert. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And don't ever load, put your buttons and all that embellish on until after it's been quilted. Oh, very good advice. Now we do have the glide foot that can glide over or up to it. Sure. But still, it's just best not to. Got it. So this is Christmas. Um, you probably have a quilt for every holiday. I didn't let you At bring, least one. <laughs> I didn't let her bring all of the quilts. I didn't want to. But, <laughs> but this one for St. Patrick's Day is really interesting. There's some beautiful custom quilting going on there, there Vicki. And it's all custom. It is, there's no pro stitcher in this one, okay? So I used rulers. So I used like a curved ruler here to get that perfect curve. Straight line rulers straight line I here. I see that channel again and you created something new in that in this right I here, create right? a whole new block so when you look at this you think well here's a block and there you know so how do I dress that so you might address it as going this way just these blocks with and then you have to figure out what you're going to do in like here you could have run a here. feather border yeah or but the way I've done candy. it it's all one border uh -huh. and created it's just given it a whole different look so you've used the word custom a few times, and um, I, I want you to define that. How do you define custom quilting? What does that mean? So custom quilting can be free motion quilting, but uh -huh. it can also be computerized quilting. Okay. So when you're doing an edge to edge, like we showed on on the one that I made for that my kids made with the hands, mm -hmm. that is an edge to edge. So that's not a custom quilting. That's just stitching from edge to edge, row upon row. Okay. okay. Custom is whether you use a computerized system or you're doing rulers and stitch in the ditch and all that, you're defining each shamrock, each piecing, each block of the quilt rather than just plow over it okay. edge to edge. Could you have quilted this with an edge to edge? Absolutely, but look how awesome this is. I love this on my, I have a big dining room table and it's just sparks it's just I'm sure it's beautiful there yeah but I'm thinking if if I was making this for my mom and I needed it tomorrow then I won't don't have time to custom quilt, then, right? then you may do something like this so let's look at this this is another fun runner that I have and it is not custom it is edge to edge okay so here's these hot summer day and I've got a popsicle and I've got the heat waves I mean, oh yeah, it's perfect. 
edge it, to edge. Yeah, it, I just can see one the heat after, coming off. Absolutely. The, I'm waiting for these to melt. Well, I just want to pick one up and start licking <laughs> it. <laughs> so this is pretty speedy, and, and is this an easy way for someone to start quilting? I would recommend that probably more than doing the custom, but the custom with our computerized quilter or just doing free motion quilting is, you know, take the, a little block and work with it. Yeah. So, Vicki, uh, we do a lot of retreats here in our studio, and you've taught a lot of quilters through the years. And some of them, they, they walk out of here doing things that, to me, look a bit like this because you've got them trying new right. techniques. So tell me about your favorite kind of student. What, what do you like to teach? I like the beginner. When really, the beginner? I love the beginners, and not I love every type of quilter. Sure. Really. Sure. But I have, over the years, I love getting a quilter acquainted with her machine, uh -huh. acquainted with the needle, with the thread, with the tension, and enabling them and seeing that spark in their eye. Oh, you know, yeah. the light goes on, and they're going, all of a sudden they go, oh, that was worth coming to the retreat. We love to hear that from our retreaters, don't we? Yes. Yeah. And so that's why the beginner, even if she's maybe quilted for two or three years, sometimes yeah. she'll always learn something new. Right. You know, and we say, if you have, we're going to, you walk through this door here and that frame just kind of neutralizes you. So now you're all beginners again. <laughs> you asked all, uh, at least in your basic retreat, you asked them to leave everything behind and start a go again with a beginner mind frame. Mm -hmm. And right? if they want to go home and do, and we encourage them to share what they know too. Sure. But if they want to go home and go back to their habits that they have, then that's fine. But they learn so much sure. from the beginning and, and it's just, I like that. So I think that the students who leave, leave here, no matter what their skill level is, uh, they're more confident after they've been here. Don't yeah. you agree? There, and there are some that have come for seven or eight years because they just love the, the, the camaraderie, the, camaraderie, <laughs> the atmosphere, and just learning because there's always something new they'll learn. Every time we have quilters come here for retreat, we, we hate to see them leave because we've got 20 new friends. And they have 20 new friends because we let oh, them yes. share their addresses and everything, and yeah. they, they're forever communicating, so yeah. they love it. It's a wonderful thing. Yes. This looks like similar colors, but there's a little bit, bit more going on that's a bigger quilt. Right, it's quite a large quilt. This is a quilt that I had pieced and ready to quilt when we, um, when we, when the infinity. Oh, when we launched our. When we launched the infinity, and it's like we need a quilt, and so, so I call. I so let me speak to that because I just told you that we used Vicky's Christmas quilt for a chocolate box, and it was a made-up pattern of my own. Yes, and and one thing that we often call on our educators to do is provide us with quilts for photography, and uh, Vicky's provided several through the years. I have, but, but we always have to be a little careful to make sure that we know where the pattern comes from right. or we create our own pattern. Right. So on this one, I actually called the quilt shop and the lady that designed this and said, can I use this in some filming? And awesome. she said, absolutely use it. And so... So tell me a little bit about the quilting here, Vicki. Is this then custom quilting? This is custom quilting. Every bit of it, except for probably the stitch in the ditch, of course, is not custom quilting. And, and it's custom, and it does have pro stitcher going on in pro here, right? Pro stitcher. And so if you look at this circle yes. here, it's continual around. It doesn't have... It doesn't join in with the other one like you would think a spiral would. Yes. But do you, can you see how it joins in? So they're you, concentric circles, is your point. Concentric circles. They don't start here and spiral and right. grow. They are concentric. But it's I continuous. Can, okay, so I see a line of stitching from the center out. That one I see, but the rest of them must be hidden in seams or uh, something. There's or, another oh, there's one. Another. So I don't see there, them. There, each one. I See? That's really Look how interesting. awesome that is because it looks like it radiates out. Vicki, when you're doing pro stitcher, I, you just showed us on the Christmas quilt that you designed one of those motifs that you quilted. Do you buy 
designs as well. Oh, I do. There are some designers. Well, this, okay, this design right here, this mm -hmm. is a Wasatch quilting design. Okay. And so, and I think these are too. All right. And so I've kind of stretched that so it doesn't look like hers normally do, does oh, because uh -huh. I wanted it to fit there. Right. And so I, I buy from a lot of quilters because there are some beautiful designs and, and sometimes I don't want to have to create my own designs. I think this is an interesting thing about the way Vicki quilts is that even though she's an expert, she will do edge to edge when it's called for. She will design her own, but she buys things when it suits her needs either because it's faster or maybe right. somebody's better at it than you. And <laughs> truly, right? because someone is better and can has that thought that like, oh, that. Or like yesterday, I was just looking and thinking, I need to buy some new designs. I saw some. Okay, so you're a shopper. We like that about you, too. I am. Yes, yes, we all are shoppers. I do have a stash. So I want to tell you something about the Handy Quilter headquarters here. We're sitting in the Handy Quilter studio and we've got offices. Vicki works in the, the education studio here. And if you walked into our building, you would notice that we have quilts hanging here. There are more than 200 quilts hanging in our building at any given time. We've got a gallery that always has a special show in it. We have quilts in our offices. That's we've right. got quilts everywhere. And so uh, some of the quilts that hung here when your husband Steve was working, you made the quilts that hung in his office, office. right? Mm -hmm. yes. So tell me about those quilts. They were patriotic quilts. And, and why patriotic for Steve? Because Steve served in uh, Vietnam. Okay. And so, and we are patriotic, sure. you know? Sure. And so he served in Vietnam and I just wanted, he liked that. But when, uh, when he passed away, uh, he hadn't, I was going to say, he hadn't really talked a lot about his service in Vietnam to mm. my children, mm. but I wanted them to know that their dad had s given his life for serving yes. in his country. Yes. And so I wanted them to have some memory of him forever, something that their kids, their grandkids, my grandkids and would since, have. Since you said it, I think we have to explain. He gave his life not when he was in Vietnam, but he was a victim he, of Agent Orange. Of Agent Orange, and so he okay. had some problems, and that was what caused his death. But So, there were patriotic quilts in Steve's office. We knew his office as the red, white, and blue office. And I see red, white, and blue quilts here, but I don't think these are the ones that hung there because through the years, those have faded. That is one of the dis disadvantages of hanging quilts in an office building. You have uh, fluorescent lights yeah. and they do fade colors. But right. tell us what you've got here, Vicki. So these are new quilts, and this is actually a quilt that I made with our studio educators uh, a couple of years ago made this one. and. Uh, it's a quilt from Missouri Star Quilt Company, one okay. of their free patterns, and we all made it with our own choice of fabrics, mm -hmm. and so each one of us have one of these, and you can see how it stripes oh, all stars, the way down. Stars, stars and, and stripes. stripes. Yeah. So we each made one, and then this is edge-to-edge -edge quilting. Mm -hmm. Always has threads on our quilts, don't they? Well, that, <laughs> that just shows that you really made and it yourself. And so this has been really, uh, it gave me a kind of a, I want to do this for my kids in memory of mm -hmm. their father. So they mm -hmm. have something in memory of what he's done. Okay. And so I made five patriotic quilts. And I bought, I really just bought the quilt kits, quilt kits from different places. Uh -huh. So every one of them was different. And you gave them all at the same time? I gave them at Christmas. And I've got a couple of them here. Oh. So here's, and I wanted to pull Did you let them over. choose or did you pick for them? So what I did is I got from Handy Quilter five identical boxes yes. and wrapped each one of them up with identical paper and then I just said there's a box under the tree without a name go pick that any box you oh, want. So no one could say mom gave me the biggest or the whatever is. And right? they all said this is the perfect one for me. So this oh one my. is Well from, I saw a label. Yes. So let's show the label right here. And that's Steve in his uniform. Yes. And uh, do you want to read what it says? In memory of Stephen William Hoth, August 26th, 1943, December 16th, 2013, served in the Vietnam War, honorable discharge, 
and uh, the time he served was May 8th of 68 through December 9th of 69 and pieced and quilted by Vicki Hoth, wife, wife of Stephen, 2018. And his quote, anytime the kids would say, Dad, what do you want? What, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want for Christmas, Dad? He'd say, I want good kids. <laughs> so you put that on here? Uh-huh. He wanted good kids. Yeah, well, he got good kids, and uh, they're lucky kids because they each got a beautiful red, white, and blue quilt. And my daughter brought this over last night, and she said, Mom, we use this. It's on the back of our couch, and we snuggle up with it all the time. Ah. So I'm sorry that it looks wrinkled and worn. Oh. It doesn't look worn at all. It just looks like it's been washed and, and used. This one is another uh, one of my sons, and and I think, I don't know what they do with it because it's theirs. I gave it to them and that's what they get to do with it. I, I want to talk just a little more about that label, Vicki, because it's so important that we document our quilts. Um, I, I joke about it that if you don't put a label on your quilt that says, that has your name on it, one day a grandchild is going to give credit to the other grandma, <laughs> not to you. Oh dear. Yes, so it's important. <laughs> Hey, you're about to retire and leave us here at Handy Quilter. We're really grateful for all you've done for us here. What are you going to do? You're going to go home and are you still going to quilt or are you oh, tired absolutely. of quilting? Well, I'm not tired of quilting because I've worked too much here to be able to quilt as much as I would like. So you remember when I said I had a stash? Yes. A stash of fabric, <laughs> yeah, a stash of patterns, a stash of thread, <laughs> a stash of already made quilts that need to be quilted. Yeah. And I have a stash of grandchildren that are saying, Grandma, can I have another quilt? Oh, that's so I have, awesome. In, in October, I will have 21 grandchildren. Congratulations. Thanks. That's really and exciting. So they're all, and then I've got a daughter or a granddaughter getting married in October, and she's going, Grandma, this is the quilt I want. So, so it's we starting all over again. There, yes, it is. So Vicki, thanks for being with Thank me today. You. Thank you for letting me swap chairs with you. I really appreciate it. I'm going to give Vicki one last chance to sign off. All right. Well, thank you for joining us on HQ Live today and join us again next month. And follow us on YouTube so that you can get a notification of our videos. Have a good day. Bye-bye.